YouTube channel. I'm Paul Naroso. In this video today, I will be showing you the components inside the system unit. So we have this the CPU. Then we have the power supply. Over here we have our hard disk. These are 500 gigabytes. Then we have random access memory. Then we have our DVD drive over here. Then these are the cables, these are called SATA, which are connecting the motherboard and other drives, for example the hard drive and the DVD drive. So we start with the motherboard, so this is the CPU fan down here, we have the CPU located here, this is, the, this is now the heat sink, these are the random access memory slots then this the CMOS then this are expansion slots so we'll disassemble this to see the CPU so this is what powers the CPU fan so just unpin it then over here this is the heatsink this is the CPU fan down here this is the CPU so between the heatsink and the CPU we have the thermal paste but in this case in this motherboard the thermal the thermal paste has dried so this is the heatsink so we want to remove the CPU so just press it down there you go so now these are our CPU over here it's a small chip Central processing unit responsible for the processing of the information. So just return it. Return this cover. So we are done with the CPU. So you come to this the RAM slots over here. In this case, my motherboard has two RAM slots. So what you do, these are the RAM sticks. The RAM sticks you have the it depends the capacity and the DDR. So in my case, this first one is DDR2. As you can see over here, this is the DDR2 memory. It's so two gigabytes. So you have another one over here. It's also a different of a different DDR but it's one of one GB so in using the random access memories with your systems so you have first to consider the compatibility with your systems so in my case I use this random access memory so there you go, you wanna place it in the RAM slots so so you do it place it There you go. So that's about the RAM. So you come over here. See these are expansion slots over here. These are an expansion slots, and these you can add uh, external or different hardware components. So in my case. I want to add this uh, NIC, this uh, network interface card for distributing of wireless information, sorry, wireless signals, maybe the Wi Fi. So you place it at any slot here, this one here, this an expansion slot. So this, uh, so that's how you place it over here. So these other slots you can add uh, others. Maybe let's say the graphics card. You wanna add uh, if this port is spoiled, then you add another hardware component over here. So over here, this is my CMOS battery. As you wanna remove it, just press at one end here. Sorry, just press at one end. Then it will get up. So this is the CMOS battery. It's responsible for booting. It helps in booting. 
then to manage the system time so sometimes you may switch on your computer then you find system time error Responsible CMOS battery is responsible for that then over here we have the this the jumper the jumper is used to clear the administrator password another thing that you've forgotten during installation you may find that your PC is prompting you to enter the administrator password during installation so just this what you take then you return it after some time so this CMOS clear then over here we have these are the SATA SATA ports you have SATA it depends your system In my system this motherboard has SATA 0, SATA 1 SATA 2, SATA 3 other systems you may find that it's not beginning from SATA 0 so it starts from SATA 1, SATA 2 onwards so these SATA these are data these are responsible for transmitting data so I'll show you how to use the, these ports so this is, the, this is what you call this is the SATA cable this is the SATA cable over here so you can place it this SATA cable connects the hard drives from the motherboard to the it connects the it links the connection between the motherboard and the hard drives this depends with your system other systems are using ID cables so you can slap the hard disk and other drives depending the number of your SATA cables that you're having in a system then these are the capacitors have capacitors over here all oh, these are the capacitors then these connect the front panel is on other connections from the to the front panel then this here this fan this CPU fan this system fan this does as I showed you this is the CPU and it's there, that's the position. So as you take it up. So again you have other ports, these are these now here. This connects from the power supply to the motherboard, same to this point here. This still connects the power from the power supply to the motherboard. Again, these other parts have the this is USB leads to the front panel front point of the motherboard so we have this is responsible for the USB this USB this is another one audio then you have here this is another one for LED so so this is this the back panel over here as you can see you have audio in audio out this responsible for the audio this is the VGA port this video graphic adapter which connects between the system unit and the monitor which then presents it can display the data there then this also for display this HDMI then these others these are USB universal serial bus then over here you have the Ethernet port this is responsible for networks so the second down here this is the power supply the power supply picks power from the main source and supplies it to the motherboard this power supply differs depending on their system the your compatibility so when you want to purchase the, uh, another power supply for a system depends the compatibility to your system so here this is the, how the power supply receives power then this one here supplies to the motherboard this one this P2 then this other one we have is P1 so, so both of them feed the motherboard then this one here feed the hard drives with power
six two input again. So over here, this is my hard disk. This is just uh, something to hold the hard disk. So you can just turn it. It's just holding the hard disk. So this hard disk is of 500 gigabytes. And the hard disk is responsible for storing information, what the output and the input. So hard disk stores information permanently compared to the random access memory. So hard disk will now depend, this also depend the capacity and also the, with the compatibility of your system. So here, this is now a SATA type of hard disk, SATA, right here. So the other hard disk used IDE. So when purchasing the hard disk, you should have in mind the type of your system. So as you can see, these now different types of hard disk. This is the ATA type of hard disk, then this is an IDE type of hard disk. As you can see, this one here is not, this ADE is not now compatible with my hard disk. It's my system, as you can see. Again, it's not compatible with this power supply. So this is the power, which powers the hard disk, as you can see over there. So which this IDE type of hard disk doesn't support that one. As you can see, this is the power over here. But again, you can just use other adapters to link up the power. Now I'll just connect all the components and make it sure that it's fully connect. It's connected, but I'll not connect the power point because it may be very dangerous for some of you or even to the system when this is it is in this state. So I'll first connect to the power supply. So this is my power supply over here. Connected my power supply. Again, connect it here. This point. This P2. So this is now the direct con connection between the cell power supply and the motherboard. So now this power supply feeds the motherboard with power. So the next thing I'm going to connect is the hard drives. So this is my hard drive here. This is my hard disk. So this is the power cable connected to this point here with the power cable. Connected to this point here. Then that's for power, responsible for power. Then over here, this is my SATA cable. You connect it to the SATA port, which will now enable the transfer of information. So if you want this hard disk to be the master hard disk, so you use the SATA zero, depending on the computer. So this again, you connect connected to this point so that the successful connection with the hard disk so again so from here when you connect direct power the system can pick up then can move you can move on with the processing of the information and performing of your activities so again I will connect these this is my DVD drive so I connect it. So also you have the power. It's over here. Just connect it to that point. Then this SATA. SATA cable responsible for data transmission. Then you connect it to this point here for data. Now this system is now complete, but not that much complete because you are now missing the mouse and the keyboard. So when you when you want to connect the mouse and the keyboard, you can use this 
back panel we have the USB ports over here or if you are the, your system is just connected completely and successful then these other points here where I listed it them before you can connect it to the front panel where you have the other USB ports so now this is the system you can now start moving on so again to ensure a successful connection between the system unit and the monitor we use this video graphic adapter is the VGA you connect it to the VGA port here connect it to the VGA then this other port you connect it to the monitor so now the transmission of information between the monitor and the system unit should now be successful again you can use this HDMI port to connect the monitor depending the compatibility of the systems so again to make your system being powered up and move on so just this now my power cable which I connected to the power supply over here connected to the power supply then this other point here, you just connect it to where the to the main source of power. There you just connect it. So again, having this other port, as I told you, the Ethernet port is now the Ethernet cable. In my case, this RJ45 is the Radio Jack 45 cable. You connect it to the Ethernet port over here. Then you connect it to the switch or router and any, any other thing that you use to source the data signal from. It's now your connection, the internet will be okay. Again, you can use this cable to transfer data from your computer to another computer. So when you come back to this point here, so that's you are receiving the network. So if you want to transmit it to another person, if you're using a desktop, so you have to, if you are, you don't have the adapter for wireless, so you use this part, you add this NIC, which stands for Network Interface Card. Now you can list the signals, network signals to other people, which can outspot or use the Wi-Fi. So again, over here, with the random access memory, if you want to add it, you can add another one depending if your computer is compatible so in my case this computer this motherboard has two RAM slots depending this your motherboard other motherboard may support four RAM slots so over here this now the DVD this now the disk you can use to place it on the Sorry, let me just move it carefully. This is the DVD. This is the DVD, the disc, where you insert to the drive. DVD drive, this is a drive, then this is the disc. So when your system is powered up, just use this port, and you press here, this will automatically open. Then you insert the DVD and view the information inside it. And so, now this is what we call a computer system because it's now fully connected. As I say, the computer system is fully connected and you can access information to and from the system. So a system is a connection of simple, simple entities that can be linked together to perform a specific task. For example, the data capture, data processing and output and even storage. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell to allow more updates. Thanks for watching.